So now I might ask Matt, what are you doing under there? You got the thing running. Uh, yeah, I did. Well, the problem is, since it wasn't running, the fuel pump and any of the oil passages and all the other stuff didn't have oil flowing to them. There's an oil leak at the pump mount. So I gotta get the pump out to replace the gaskets. With the splash guards not in place, this is super easy. Now I've got a bucket underneath to catch all the diesel coming out. With those two bolts, the pump is free. And I can lift it out. You can kind of hear the push rod in there. You can get the old gasket off. There we go. I've got the pump out. And you can see the four hole like cover plate. I gotta get that out next. The lower bolts, it's nice and easy to take them off from underneath. A uh, box end wrench is sufficient to get them. And then just grab the plate. And it comes free. And of course it comes free because it's not attached to the casket. So in the bottom of the fuel pump boss, there's an oil return hole. I've plugged it with that red cap so that no gasket or any goop goes down there into the oil pan. Since I plugged it, it's important to remember to take that out before I put it all together. Otherwise, things are gonna be very, very bad and oil won't return down to the pan. And this is gonna be another instance where it's easier to scrape this old gasket off from underneath. My trusty Napa razor blade scraper on a stick that I've had forever. I think I've had it since high school. That uh, is what I'm gonna be using here. On the block off plate, I can tell I'm on the right track just due to how much oil residue and buildup there is on here. This is the outside, and it's all just oily dirt. So that comes off pretty easily. The inside's got another baked on gasket, so that's gonna be a little bit of a chore getting this thing down to bare metal. Scraper should make short work of it. With the block off plate cleaned up, I can put the new gasket on. It's a Felpro 5182, and it's the exact same as a small block Chevy, 1955 to 1995. So before I do this on the engine where it might be hard to see, I'm gonna show off my trick to keeping the fuel pump push rod up to get the fuel pump finger in place. So the push rod normally sits about like this. And what happens is it, you shove it up, but it just slides back down under gravity and you wind up about there. And then you can't get the fuel pump finger behind it. I have a piece of plastic from a clamshell, one of those plastic packages. So when I put this together, I'm gonna to put it like down there. So then when I go to push the fuel pump in, I can get the fuel pump behind here and slide it down and it pushes the rod up. And then all I do is just pull the plastic out. And then I'll have the pump arm and the pump rod in contact. It won't be stuck underneath, it won't be wedged, it won't be anything weird. Another point is, remember which way this came out. That there's a distinct wear pattern on this end that's different from this end. This one's the pump end, this is the cam end. So before installation, I'm gonna prep this gasket with a little bit of ultra black. That way, there's a more mechanical bond and I'm not just relying on the paper gasket to seal this thing. Figure it's not 1985 when they built the Humvee for the first time. So I could do things a little bit differently. I'll do the one side. And fix it to my plate. And then I'll go ahead and do the other side. Slide the push rod in. can't see and I'm assuming that my arm is in the camera. Making sure to put the fuel pump to block off plate gasket in place and I actually secured it with a tiny bit of gasket adhesive. Now I'm going to slide the pump back onto the engine block. I apologize for as much as my hand's going to shake this camera around but it's going to be what it's going to be. So now it's just a matter of putting the pump bolts back in. The tech manual wants you to mess around with a bunch of stuff. I didn't do that. I just put these bolts in first, 
check my alignment, made sure I could get the pump in and then tighten them down later. The torque spec on these bolts is pretty low. So just doing it, not to say by feel underneath is good enough for me. I don't think they're gonna go anywhere and I'm not gonna strip them out by over torquing them. And then the last step is to just torque the bolts. The torque specs are in the tech manual. So let's start it up and see if we actually fixed it. So that's one of the benefits of the clear filter. I can see the fuel pumping into it, showing me that it's actually doing something. After completing the repair of getting the pump back in place, I let it run for about a half an hour last night. There's no drip from either gasket on the mating surface, so I didn't see any oil on the drip pan, and there's no fuel leaks or anything, so I consider this to be a success. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.